Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namaste so it's early in the morning, the sun just came up, and let's talk about the creation. Huh? We talked in the last episode about the four states of consciousness. So how does the creation look from these four states of consciousness? Well, as you remember, Jagrat is dualistic consciousness of the world. And Swapna is also dualistic, but it's internal consciousness of dreams. Sushupti is deep sleep consciousness in which one is not aware of anything. And finally, Turiya is consciousness of Brahman, Brahman realization. So, the creation, the world, Jagrat or Jagat, which means the manifold, the many, looks different in each one of these states of consciousness. In Jagrat consciousness, of course, you have the world as reality. Huh? The world is real, the body is real, the body is the self, huh? it's me. I am an actor, I have free will, um, there is cause and effect, karma, and the, there is basically a mechanistic world that runs by scientific rules and is made up of atoms. Okay, so this is the world to the person in external consciousness, Jagrat consciousness. So in the Vedas, we find an elaborate description of the creation that from Brahman somehow uh, Shakti emanated and she created the forms of Shiva and Shiva and Shakti created Brahma and Brahma created basically everything else. It's interesting that we find in different Puranas the description of the creation is different. The creation described, for example, in Lakshmi Tantra that we did in a long series on, is very different from the creation described in the Bhagavat Purana and the creation described in the Shiva Purana or the Srimad Devi Bhagavatam are also different. So why is that? You would think that the Vedic scriptures would want to be consistent and say the same story in all of their different recensions, but it's not. That is a clue, that is a hint, that it doesn't really matter. Why doesn't it matter? Well, because the higher states of consciousness view creation very differently. <laughs> and so in the lower states of consciousness, whatever you want to think is, is pretty much okay, you know? That's why we actually, we have no quarrel with the scientists. Even though Vedic uh, lore prescribes theistic creation, whether the theism concerned is of a, a god or goddess or the laws of scientific uh, nature, materialism, is, is of little concern to us. And you'll understand why that is when we get to the higher states. <laughs> so what about Svapna? In Svapna, we also see a world, but that world is internal. It's in the mind and it's very temporary. It just changes from moment to moment. Actually, if you observe your dreams, if you develop lucid dreaming, you'll see crazy things happen. <laughs> the rules change constantly. 
and you seem to know things that really you have no means of knowing and there's no antecedent. Uh, so it's hard to justify uh, any kind of a rational sequence in dreams. But there, at least there's still a world and it seems to be out there. Huh? There seem to be senses. But for example, have you ever had a dream where you had a sense of smell? I can't remember one. Can you? Maybe your dreams are different. I don't know. But for me, I've never had a dream where the sense of smell or taste come to think of it. That's very odd. But sight and hearing are certainly there and even touch. What is beyond that? Huh? Do we need a story for that too? Well, the story is our own experience and we extract the material for the dream from our memories that we haven't fully processed, that we haven't fully uh, digested. In the next stage, Sushupti, we're not aware of any world. And if we enter Sushupti consciously in meditation through Raja Yoga, we find the same thing. There's no world. Or if there is a world, it's in a space that's so vast that it just recedes to nothing. So for all practical purposes, there's no world in Sushupti. There is only self and space. Now, space is very interesting. Akash in Sanskrit, which is sometimes wrongly translated ether. But it's not a good translation because, for one thing, ether is an obsolescent term. And for another thing, space is not a thing, although it has material qualities. For example, dimension, direction, and it's also frictionless. And these are material qualities. So the tattva of Akash is very similar to consciousness because it's all pervading. It's one. It can't be divided. It can't be made to stick to anything. For example, if you have a pot, the space inside the pot and the space outside the pot are the same. And the only delineation is by the uh, structure or the outline or the boundary, the shape of the pot itself. And when the pot is broken, we're thinking about clay pots here, <laughs> when the pot is broken and it merges back into the soil, then what happens to the space that was in the pot? Well, it was never really separate. That's only our conception because we think in terms of boundaries and, and dimensions and stuff like that. So even for someone in Sushupti, there has to be a story of creation. How did this space come to be? And of course, if you're in meditation in Sushupti, then the space is something you created by getting rid of the world or just by the conception of an unlimited space. And finally, in Turiya, there is no world. There never was a world and there cannot be a world. No creation, no gods, no objects, no nothing, only self. So for those who have realized Brahman, there is no creation. There is no need for an uh, elaborate story of how everything came to be. Because to one in Turiya, the world doesn't exist. It's like the snake and the rope. The snake seems to exist but as soon as we investigate, we find actually it's just a rope. 
So the delusion that the snake exists is similar to the story of creation. That uh, this whole world came into existence by some step-by-step -step process like that. Because when we attain realization, the world disappears. And we see very clearly that it is an illusion, a delusion, just like the snake in the rope. The substrate of everything is Brahman. Brahman is reality. Brahman is actually the only thing that's real because it never changes. So how can Brahman act? Brahman is actionless, boundaryless, non-conceptual, indescribable, unrelated to anything else, because there isn't anything else. So <laughs> it's not possible for Brahman to create the universe. Well, then, what about the Vedic version? Aum Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnam Udachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Aum, meaning Brahman, meaning everything that is, meaning all four states of consciousness, as we described in an earlier video the Mandukya Upanishad. So this Aum is Purnam. Huh? That is Purnam. Purnam Adha. Purnam Idang. This world is Purnam. It's complete. It's full. Nothing missing. It's self-sufficient as a complete whole. Purnat Purnam Udachite. This complete comes from that complete. Uh, Udachite means like emanated or created by. Purnasya Purnam Adaya. Even though this complete is coming from that complete, Purnam Eva Vashishyate. <laughs> The complete source remains complete. So this is actually a riddle. This is the introduction or the invocation to the Ishopanishad, the first Upanishad. So the first Upanishad begins with a riddle. How is it that this universe, which is so complete and, and self-functional and self-regulating and all that, how is it that it comes from Brahman or appears to come from Brahman and yet Brahman is not changed at all and certainly not diminished? How is that possible? How can the complete come from the complete without the complete becoming incomplete? <laughs> well, the only possible answer is that the universe, uh, the Purnamidang, is an illusion. It doesn't really exist. For example, if we have mirage of water in the desert, it doesn't really exist. It doesn't take any water from anywhere else. And when, it, when we go to investigate, it disappears. It doesn't go anywhere. There's nowhere for it to go because it doesn't really exist in the first place. It's simply an illusion. Similarly, from the highest point of view, that of Turiya, Brahman, the world doesn't exist. The world can't exist because Brahman cannot be transformed. Brahman is actionless, so it cannot do anything. It cannot create anything. So then how does this creation come into being? Through our ignorance. Huh? We are seeing the snake when it's really a rope. 
We are seeing the world when there's actually nothing but Brahman. See, now, <laughs> when you realize this, how do you go on living in the ordinary way? <laughs> it's just not possible. You can't take this world seriously anymore. It's all just illusion. It's just small change. It's like not even worth counting. Huh? So this is the paradox of creation, that it only exists in the states of consciousness that admit of duality. And in the state of non-duality, creation never happened. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>